Let's start with shape number one. Create document. Let's call it shape one. Now it's important that we're in the correct units. So always make sure under here and workspace units, you're in the correct units. In this case, we are in inches and inches, so we're good. Now this orthographic drawing has three views. The shaded area represents the front view of each of these shapes. You can see the shaded area in the front. That shaded area points to its corresponding front view drawing. Then you have the top view and the right side view. So again, front, top, right side. There, now we've added the names to each of the views. To start this drawing, you would choose one of the views. And then you would choose its corresponding work plane. So let's start with the front view. Let's start drawing that. So I'm going to choose front, right click, new sketch. Now again, P gets rid of the work planes and flattens out the sketch. Let's talk dimensions. On an orthographic drawing, the dimensions, let's say the length of this, which is two inches here, it doesn't show those same dimensions here on the top view. Whereas on the top view, you have the thickness of this, which is one inch, but that's not shown on this view here. The reason, if you put too many dimensions on, this drawing would be so cluttered. So sometimes you have to hunt around for the dimensions. Let's begin. To start, let's first draw the cube. So the overall length of this is 2 inches, and the overall height of this is 1.25. So I'm going to sketch here, click, to return 1.25, like that. Something very important. Let me redraw this again. You remember it's 1.25 by 2. So I enter 2 here, return, and let's say I accidentally hit the escape key or something. I don't have a dimension here. To dimension anything, you just go up to the dimension tool or hit the letter D. I'm going to select that and I can select the line and I drag out the dimension and change it. 1.25. I can also double click on any dimension and alter its dimension. In this case we do want this at 2. So again complete control over dimensioning. Now I need to extrude this to one inch here. So again we have 2 by 1.25 by 1 inch. Extrude to 1 inch. Alright, there we go. Now we have our cube. Let's start carving away material. Let's start here. And again you could start a few different places but we'll begin on this front view. I'm going to carve this away. The dimension from here to here it doesn't give us that dimension so we have to do a little subtraction. 2 inches minus 1.25 equals 0.75 inches. The height of this, if I follow this line all the way across, I can see that 0.75 is also the height. Let's talk quickly about that. So all of these lines will align to their drawings. If I go to the right, the bottom, this middle one to here, this one goes over to here, this one to here. These dash lines, like you learned, are like x-ray vision. I'm looking through the part, so this is kind of an invisible line here. And if I look, I'm seeing this back edge here. These dotted lines indicate this hole, these dotted lines indicate this hole, this dotted line here indicates the center line of that hole. All right, so let's return to this. So we know this is 0.75 and this is 0.75. I'm going to create a sketch on that front using the line command. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to pull that line all the way down to here and I'm going to enter 0.75. And now I need to go over 
0.75 and I'm going to go up to here hit escape and now I press OK now I just select this right click extrude or click on the extrude button here and now instead of adding material I'm going to remove it and drag it all the way through and there it is we just carved out the front of this right here next let's carve out this one and this one to do that I'm gonna select the right side because that's where we're at the right side right click new sketch in and now I need to go 0.25 inches up and this distance over let's take a look we would probably need our top view looking down to get this distance and here it is right here at the top view now it doesn't tell us what this distance is so again we have to do a little subtraction 1 minus 0.5 equals 0.5 minus 0.25 for this distance equals 0.25 that's the remaining so this would be 0.25 so again using lines I'm going to go up 0.25 and again a lot of times I just drag that up 0.25 enter and I'm going to zoom in a little bit I'm a little far away and I'm going to go over 0.25 enter and then I'm going to go up 0.25 now this is where it gets a little tricky if I turn this a little bit you can see it's not referencing this line because that line is kind of back here I'm going to hit N so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up, I'm going to go over, and I'm going to go down. I'm going to accept. I'll click here to kind of flatten it out. And I'm going to choose this and this. Extrude, and this time I'm going to be removing again. I'm going to pull this all the way through and click OK. And there it is. Let's go back to that sketch. I'm going to double click on this and hit N. So I could have created a line going this way, a line going here, and a line going down along here. That would have worked as well. But when you're carving things away, just get a line out here, down to here, just a quick way, and then you can see what the effects were of that. Next, let's carve this one. So this one is 0.75 up, and from here to here, we have to look at the top view again. So again, this will be a hidden line because we'll be using our x-ray vision to look through this to here. So looking down right to there, it looks like this distance from here to here is 0.5. So 0.75 up and 0.5 over. Again, I'm going to create a sketch here. Right click, new sketch, hit the letter N. And now 0.5 over, 0.75 up. So from that corner, I'm going to go here, 0.5, and I'm going to go up, 0.75. And now I need to enclose this, right, because it's just a line here. So I'm going to drag this out. Again, I could go here and then down, or I can just drag it all the way out and make that like that. And accept this. I have to select everything that I need. Click here, remove, drag it through. Click OK. Lastly, let's put the two holes in. Let's start with this one. So I'm going to select this face, right click, new sketch, and now it's telling me I have a hole. The center of the hole is 0.25 down and 0.38 over. So again, I'm going to use the line command, 0.38 over. I'm going to click here. I'm just going to drag it out, 0.38, enter. And now I need to go down, 0.25, enter. Now what this did is this gave us the center point of that circle. So now that circle being 
0.25 inch diameter. This is a diameter symbol. That means from here to here. Radius would be center to outer. Diameter is outer to outer. So circle command, click here, 0.25 inches. And again, any dimension on my drawing, I can double click it and I could change the dimension and that will alter anything that's attached to it. But let's put this back, 0.35. All right, now I accept this. I'm going to turn it a little bit. I'm going to zoom in, click, and reverse it. Looks like it's going all the way through. Except, and there we go. All right, let's put that last circle on top. Right click, new sketch, and that circle is 0.25 by 0.25 to its center, and it's also a diameter of 0.25. So using the line command again, right to here, drag it up, 0.25, enter, and down, 0.25, enter. Uh, hit the escape key. Here's my circle. I like to drag it out where I can see it. 0.25. And now I hit accept. Turn it a little bit. Zoom in. And move. And this part is done. And one thing you can always do if you need to check the length of lines or edges, you can select those edges and lower right corner will tell you what the length is, 0.75. I could select points and between the points it'll tell you what the length is or it will give you the nearest distance. If I hover over it, you can see that it's telling me where that distance is located.